What's going on, everyone? I finally um, just decided to use the webcam as well. Um, but anyways, for this video, I'm sure everyone's aware I've just released my Netflix course over on Scrimba, so hopefully everyone's enjoying that. Um, it feels weird speaking in well to a mic and a camera. The mic's not too bad, but the camera, it's a bit weird. Uh, I'm sure I'll get used to it. But um, So anyways, I can't keep doing these seven hour tutorials. Um, I do have one coming up there, so don't worry. But it, it probably takes maybe two or three months each time because I need to plan what I'm going to do. Um, packages change, you know, with the JavaScript uh, ecosystem. And well, essentially I thought, what can you get more value out? Yes, you can get more value if you're a beginner out of maybe a five, six, seven hour course um, building an entire application. But I think um, for me, and I think a lot of developers will get quite a lot of value out of these types of tutorials, where when you're just building products or, well, products, apps, whatever it may be, um, you, you tend to, that, well, that's where I tend to get most of my learning from. And I'm building this uh, side project here. I've been working on it for, I don't know, two months now. Um, I don't want to get into exactly what it's doing um, because it would prolong the video. But let me just show you what's going on. So it's basic app, client side, uh, client side routing, no server side because at the minute, I tried with uh, next.js and I've used it in the past quite a lot, but it seems to have got rid of, um, I think get data from tree, um, which I, I think so anyhow, get it from tree. Uh, yep, here we are, get data from tree. It's not working. So it's really frustrating, so I'm not too sure. So I just thought, you know what, I'll just use Webpack. Uh, but what's going on basically, I don't want to keep you here too long, is, when you render out this initial homepage, and I'm using Webpack to bundle this. Um, no, I can show it here. Uh, Webpack dev. Um, yeah, so what's going on here is um, I am splitting the code. So I'm splitting the chunks and you get in like the vendor bundle, which is nice. But when you go into app, you'll see it pulls in, if I just pull this over, and I'm sure everyone's run across this issue with code splitting. Um, you'll see here, like it's pulling in the components, it's pulling in the header. Um, but more importantly, as you can see in the app, not this one. Is this the one? Uh, what, I, what have I been working on? Let me just reset this. Um, let me see here. Reset this. Um, Let's have a look at the app again. So what's happening is I'm pulling in a sign-in page. So the sign-in page should look like this. Uh, it looks it looks quite good. Um, it's not too bad. But I don't want this to come into the initial um, homepage bundle. Uh, so we can have a look at this. Um, so you got the app.js that comes in. And then if I scroll down, I expect in sign-in, to have a signing form, and then on here, you will have email address. So we can check that we have email address. So it's in there, right? So we expect it's in there because you're seeing create element for the, uh, well, it looks like the JSX here, um, but I'm using Chakra, uh, which is really nice. But what's going on is I get the password there as well. So you can see here when you're looking through the uh, web pack, uh, what's been bundled, um, you do get, um, you know, you can kind of correlate it with a code. But I don't want this in here because on the, the first uh, page render or the home page, even though you're getting no content, it's, you know, the bundle size is going to be larger, even though it's running on dev and you can kind of do some optimizations. Um, so I was just thinking, okay, how can you, you know, make this uh, smaller? So what I did, I, um, what are we on here? Get rid of that. So basically when you pull these in, obviously, even though it's a default um, export and we're just importing it and giving it any sort of name, because you can give it any name, uh, 
Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so basically what you have to do is you can use a dynamic input. And I know if you look at the React documentation, you'll see, well, basically this is where I found the answer. Um, so what you do as opposed to inputting them like this, you can do like const home equals react.lazy. And when you do a dynamic input, you do it simply like this. So you'll say pages, was it pages? Yep, and then home. I'll just replicate these. So I think we had an account, we had offers and sign in. And I'll put that to sign in, uh, offers, account. So now that's probably gonna break, yep. Um, so what you gotta do down here is, this basically is suspense by the way, and I know some people be like, oh, there's no need to use, uh, well, you shouldn't be using suspense, it's gonna change, but you know what? What better option is there right now? Um, this is easy. Um, I'm sure I can change it when suspense changes. Um, but basically, so it does, to make sure it doesn't go in the bundle, just do react.suspense. It needs a fallback. If you don't give it a fallback prop, then it's just gonna whinge at you. So I'm just gonna give it, let's see, load in. Take that, shove that down here. Thank you, ESLint. So that's working, but still, if we take a look, we can see what's going on. Go into app, pull that over, just do a search for email address so it's not there. So you can get the, let's have a look. Sign in, so I am home. Why are you home? Um, strange. Uh, it looks like it's calling it, um, yeah, I am home. So it's gonna bring that in each time, which is annoying. Um, so one way to that I basically got around this is, uh, so we can have a look at re React Suspense. Uh, code splitting, I think this was the one. Yeah, lazy, so it takes a function that um, must call a dynamic input, this must return a promise, which resolves to a module have a default export, we've done that. The lazy component should be rendered inside suspense component, which allows us to show fallback content. So while we're waiting for the component to load, do this, fallback prop accepts any React element that you want to render. Okay, I've heard that, cool. Um, you know, the React docs used to be really good and now you're starting to, you know, it's still, the docs are full of class components. It's just a bit crazy at the, min at the minute. Um, they, the, they used to be good and they still are good, but the Apollo docs, they're, they're just terrible. You can even wrap multiple lazy components. So I don't know what it's saying here, right? So I can barely understand this, but um, the, the way I would do this, because it's telling me to return a promise, you can actually use in React Router, you can just say render. And I'll just say, okay, now we've got the promise, give me offers. And I know for sure this is gonna work, regardless, I, I don't know if it's best practice, whatever that means, um, but it works, right? So, well, I think so, we'll, we'll test it out. But this is what I've just been playing with recently. Um, account, get rid of account, account, get rid of, give me home. Uh, what have I missed? There, I think, maybe, on each one. Okay, so anyway, so we've got that now. Let's, uh, let's take a look, is everything fine? Uh, fail to compile, why? Um, React suspense, fallback, it looks right. What happens if I just refresh? Uh, close that. Uh, let's see. Open up here. So it's quite a big app that um, I built. It's gone a bit crazy. Um, I probably should, should have used something like Amplify. Um, or just some, I don't know, some serverless uh, architecture because managing MySQL, GraphQL, it's getting a bit of a pain to be honest to build, you know, a small app. So anyhow, I am home. Okay, so I think what happened there, um, so that's been rendered, okay. 
But it seems like that's not coming out. Hmm. That's strange. Why is it giving me I am, I am home? Uh, home. Very strange. Hmm. So we've got page wrapper. That's nothing to do with it. It's uh, home. This is the first time I've seen it do this, which is uh, very weird. Um, so anyways, it works like this and I'm sure it would work before when you just pass that in, but I wonder why it's giving me the home. So it's getting to sign in, which is fine. Okay, let's give it home again. So I am home. What the? How's it doing this? So anyways, let's just debug this. Uh, what we're looking for in here, home. What is, are these tools even working? Seems the route seems messed up. Okay, let me just check this and I'll be back in a second. All right, I know where it was. Um, a very stupid one. You need exact on here. So I totally forgot to put that on because what's going to happen is this is going to be like slash, yeah, offers, slash offers, right? So the first bit here is going to fall down to the last one, which is here. So unless it's, if you don't have exact on there, it's, it's, you know, it's going to uh, do that. So let's give that a serve. So now if I check the bundle, um, up, we go down, you search for email address. It's not there. It's not being pulled in, uh, which is nice. And what was I on there? Um, so you see it's not in the app, but I mean, what is it in? So we can check runtime. It's not in there either. So what you'll see when you go and inspect, it's going to get injected. Let's take a look. So you won't see it there, but if I do a refresh, do JS, here we are. So I look email address, there it is. Okay, so yeah, it's basically splitting them up and it's been it's been quite smart in regards to the code splitting. So you see here I've got my mutations from GraphQL. Um, this seems one of the best ways, I believe, to code split if you're just using uh, client side. This will not work on server side, um, especially doing like, you know, dynamic inputs. So I don't know if there's a server side solution or the, I think there's actually some, is it called React Loadable? Yeah, so check that out. That was just a quick tip as to um, basically, you know, get the bundle size down. I'm not even too sure if React or Outer are going to be keeping render. I mean, um, I think they are. If not, you can, you know, simply remove it and then if you put these, you know, as a ch uh, as a child, um, I think it will work the same. But you know, test it out. That's what um, I got to work to get my bundle size down. And there's just no need for me to load it on here now. And then let's have a look what's in number three because we had one, and there we are. You just get the home in there. So yeah, that's code splitting, I guess. If um, not many people seem to care about it, but with bundle sizes and whatnot, you know, it's nice to just know these uh, little techniques. So yeah, I'll bring you more of these little tips. Let me know what you think. Was it useful? Um, and if you want some Webpack tips, let me know. I do like Webpack surprisingly. Um, but yeah, anyways, different type of video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.